Well, you guys, when you're in volleyball, you rotate positions, right? You move around. So at any given time, one set of players is on the net and the other set of players is in the back, though, right? So what do you call it when the other team sends over an easy one and you just pop it up there and you actually say something to cue your other players? It's called a what? Set. A set. Okay, we're going to do a set. We're going to do a volleyball. This problem is going to be a volleyball set. And if Hannah was here, I'd probably make you go out front and actually do it so that we could videotape it so I could get some actual numbers here. Um, so a set, is, a set is when a volleyball player, uh, I am not going to be able to do this well, but pretend these are arm, hands and arms, hands and arms. And the volleyball is going to be, that looks like a basketball, but you know, here's a person is going to set, is going to set, is going to set, that's right, they usually have a ponytail, right? So it's got to come back in a, I don't know. That looks like a balloon stuck to her head now, okay. Um, I cannot, I cannot draw this. I cannot draw this, but I, you know. Um, this is called a set. So uh, the ball is going to be, when the ball is, leaves her hands, it's no longer accelerating up, but it's leaving her hands with some, with some velocity, which I'm going to call VI, and I'm just going to pick 5 meters per second because I think that's a reasonable speed for a ball being thrown up. Um, I'm going to make a little graph over here to try to define some terms. And I'm going to be working in, since we're working vertically, I'm going, to, I'm going to be, I'm going to call this the Y. A lot of our motion, our, uh, motion equations are in terms of X and T, um, but it doesn't really matter how you set up the problem. Um, we're just defining variables here, and Y seems to be convenient because people like to think about Y being the vertical. Uh, and time. And uh, at the moment that the ball leaves uh, let's call Sophia's hands. Um, this is going to be y0. So y0 is our initial height, and we're going to call y0, uh, y0 equal to 0. Right. The book uses i, right? I always want, want to, I always want to say why not. Let's y i, right? For initial, initial velocity. I mean, initial position. Okay. So the initial, the initial position is zero. It leaves your hands at a velocity of five meters per second. As time goes on, the ball goes up and up and up and up and up until what happens? What's the law of gravity? What comes up come must come down. So in order for it to begin to come down, it's got to stop going up. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So the ball, I mean, this is like obvious to you, right? But we're going to actually do some math with this stuff. So the ball goes up and up and up and up and up, and then there becomes a point in time, T1, where the ball has reached some maximum height. I'm going to call it Y max. Y max. At some point in time, I'm going to call T1 the ball reaches a maximum height. And then it begins to come down T2. Um, the problem is going to be what is Y max? And what is T2? These, uh, I like this because uh, volleyball players, these athletes, they're trained, they practice all the time, and they, they do this, I'm sure they do this in a drill, and they, they shoot the ball up. They're... The person doing the setting knows about how hard to hit the ball, and maybe they imagine a point in, in space where they want that ball to go. And then the, the person who's going to do this, what do you call it, the slam dunk or whatever, 
the, the, person, the person who does the spike, the person who's going to do the spike, maybe that's not what it's called either, I don't know. The pick? Set, hit. All right, the person who's going to do the hit knows that once she hears the, the sound of the set, she's got a certain amount of time, and she's got to time it just right so she gets to the point where she wants to be to hit the ball, right? I'm breaking this down all down, maybe too mechanically, right? Because it happens with automaticity, right? With the athletes. They just practice this and practice this and they practice this. But if I was going to train a robot how to do this, if I was going to train a robot how to do volleyball, I've got to tell the robot, all right, so many seconds after you hear the hit, the set, you've got to be here with your arm in this place to hit it. All right, I don't know. All right, let's figure this out. Um, I'm going to use the standard motion equation, the general equation. Um, it's going to look like the problem, the equations that you have in your notes. So the position of the ball is going to be um, determined by the position that it started at plus the velocity that the ball was moving to begin with times the time that has passed plus one half any accelerations involved times the time that has passed squared. You'll recognize that as one of our motion equations. In this case, our initial position is zero. We have an initial velocity. Um, what is A going to be in this case? Gravity. Gravity, absolutely. So uh, acceleration is going to be minus g. Acceleration of gravity is 9.1, 9.81 meters per second squared. And since, it's, since I've set the problem up this way, gravity is working against us, hence the negative value. So I can rewrite this equation uh, specifically There she is. Right. Hey, we were just talking about you. We're playing volleyball. So I can rewrite this equation specifically for solving for trying. We're going to try to find y max. Uh, the initial position is zero. I'm not going to write that term. But that term's going to go away. Uh, we have an initial velocity. We, uh, and we're, this time is going to be an issue here. So um, I'm going to write negative g in here for the acceleration and t squared. So here's my specific equation. I can't solve it. Do you have an initial velocity? I do. I'm not going to plug in numbers right now. Because this is the way I want to try to teach you guys to do it, to not just plug in the numbers, but to leave the variables in there until you solve the equation for the variable that you want. Because if you plug in numbers right away, you're going to miss some of the little Easter eggs. You're going to miss the physics. You're going to miss the physics if, if you just start plugging in numbers. All right. This is our specific equation, but t is still yet to be determined. We don't know, well, well, t, we know what t, we know what we want t, t to be. We want t to be, we, this is going to be y max at t1. At t equals t1, we're going to get y max. But we don't know what t1 is yet. We have to use another equation. Find T. I'm just going to put it up here because you guys could look at your notes, I'm sure, and you could we could talk about which one of the four equations to use. I want to use VF is equal to VI plus AT. So this is the general equation, and we have well, do we have VI, 
we know what the initial velocity is that, leave, that the ball leaves her hand. At y max, do we know what the velocity is? It is zero. So this is one of those, this is where you have to interpret the question. You have to look at the situation. You are not going to be given this. You have to know that there is an instant in time when the ball stops going up and starts to come back down. And that velocity, we're going to pick this VF to be zero at T1. Okay? So then, uh, if I rewrite this equation for T, then this is VF minus VI uh, divided by A, right, is equal to T. Um, but this is specifically going to be our T1, and this is specifically going to be gravity minus, minus G. Now I think we can plug in numbers. Our final velocity is going to be zero. Our initial velocity was five, and our acceleration of gravity is 9.81. Thank you, Mr. McCart, for getting out your calculator and telling us what T1 is. 0. 0.51 seconds. 0. 0.51 seconds. Is it, it, that's what our T1 is equal to. Okay? That hasn't answered any of our questions yet. We want to know what Y max is, and we want to know what T2 is. Y max, now that we know what T1, uh, now that we know what T1 is, now we can plug this in and get a and get a Y max. So Y max is going to equal to the initial velocity, which is 5 times uh, T1, which is 0.51. Mr. McCarter, you're going to be plugging these numbers in for me, right? Doing it as we speak. All right. And a negative, I don't know if you want to write a negative G here, or you could bring that negative sign out here. Since I've already written that plus sign, I'm going to put it right there. And we're going to do a point, uh, wait a minute. Let me make this the point. Ah! Uh, negative point, 9.81, point 0.51 squared. Okay. Now we can get a Y max. 1.27 meters. That seems about right. All right? Let me get a ball. All right? It's about a meter to the ceiling. Oh. Okay. Okay, 1.27 meters up. All right, so we've got an answer to our first one, 1.27 meters, we got a time to T1, how much time do you think it's going to take to come back down? Now that's very insightful. So you say that T2 is just going to be 2 times T1. Let's see, how can we find that out? We want to find out we're starting at a height here. So this is like a new problem. All right? So our initial velocity is equal to zero because it went up and stopped. Our initial height, our initial height is equal to 1.27 meters. And we want to know how long it's going to take to come down. All right? How so that's like, okay, that's like T2 minus T1, right? T2 T2 minus T1, how long is it going to take to come down? That's what we don't know. Let's just call that, I don't know, T3, right? You and your subscripts, Mr. A. But we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay, so uh, we know our initial velocity. We know our, so could we not use, would we go back to this position equation? I think we're going to have to use this one. All right, so I have to go back to this one. So um, we know that, one more thing, we know that, our, that when we hit the ground, when we come back to where we started, 
our y, our y, our y final is going to be zero, right? Because it's it came back down to where it started, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you uh, for the encouragement here because I'm struggling. All right. So y final is is going so we can so we can use this equation. Y is equal to y zero plus v uh, t plus one half a t squared. Y final is going to be zero. Our Y initial is equal to 1.27, 1.27 plus the initial velocity, which is zero. So we don't have to write that term, thank goodness. Uh, one half minus g times t squared. Oh, I like this. This is very important. Okay. Solving for this, let's see, bring a negative 1.27 over here is going to be equal to, I'm going to bring this negative sign out, that's a negative 1 half 9.81 t squared. Multiply through by a negative 1, multiply times 2, and divide by... 9.81. I, I did all that. Um, if you replay the video, <laughs> you'll see where I did this voodoo math. But yes, this came over, it was a negative. This was a negative over here. I ran a negative one through the equation. I made my negatives go away. So I made my negatives go away. Multiplied by two, divided by 9.81. Now I'm going to take the square root of each side and I'm going to get T3. Mr. McCarter, my handy calculator over here says, in fact, that the time it takes to go up is the same time as it takes to go down. So T2, which is the total round trip time, is 1.02 seconds. Here's my point. Looking at this equation right here, in your notes, I want you to write... A f what I call the free fall equation. If you look at this carefully, it's 2 times 1.27 over g. 1.27 is this y max, right? If you just say that that is the height of the object thrown up or the height of the ball being dropped, if, we, if I replace that 1.27 with an h and replace 9.81 with what it is, g, write, write this equation down in your notes and put a box around it. Square root 2h over g. That's the free fall equation, what I call the free fall equation. It's very, very useful. Use this equation, for example, if you wanted to impress your date and drop a pebble down a well and tell them how deep it is. So if you knew the time it took for the pebble to drop, you would know how deep the well is. So you want to impress your date, carry this around in your iPhone, all right? Okay, I think we beat that one up. <laughs>